Hey there guys, welcome back to another review. I've been wanting to talk about this one for a while. I actually just watched this not too long ago. And this is a film that gets hated. Um, I saw this movie in the theater, and to be honest, I thought it was boring. Uh, all the way up to the third act where it actually got interesting. Um, I can see why people didn't like it. But my feelings on it have changed for the better. It is a 1995 American science fiction action adventure film that's based on, well, it's loosely based on Michael Crichton's 1980 novel by the same name. And it was directed by Frank Marshall, and it is Congo. Frank Marshall, you know, he usually does <clears throat> executive producing work with uh, Kathleen Kennedy and Steven Spielberg. Um, and it was really nice to see him direct this. And I don't think this movie is that bad. I mean, if you can stand the characters, and if you can stand nothing really happening until the third act, then you're good to go. Um, I do like the adventure part. And I do like this, like, Lost City mystery you know, diamond thing going on in the Congo that they want to explore. I think they could have maybe dived deeper into that lore, but for what we got, it was fine. That wasn't really the main focus either. There, there's a lot of stories going on here. I mean, for instance, okay, you have the main story, which is, you know, they're testing communications in the Congo, basically a laser in the remote part of the Congo. The problem is, is that it's near a volcanic site and there's been volcanic activity. Now, in my opinion, it's really stupid to do it near a volcanic site, to do anything near a volcanic site because it's a volcanic site. I mean, do you really think that the volcano is not going to erupt anytime soon? I don't know. I don't know what they're thinking. But anyway, <clears throat> while they're testing this um, laser communication, there's a couple employees, and Bruce Campbell's one of them. It's kind of cool, Bruce Campbell. Um, but they discover there's this lost city near the site. And this lost city is guarded by these ancient gorillas. And you know, that's what this movie is. It's like a de determination between, like, what a gorilla actually looks like. There's there's the black gorillas. There's the gray gorillas. There's there's just different colors or variations of gorillas, which I didn't even know. But, but, these, but that's what they're saying in this movie is that the gray gorillas are, like, elderly. And they're, like, ancient, I guess. And they watch over this lost city because this lost city has diamonds. And it's the Lost City of Zinj, the King Solomon's Diamonds. And any who enter there never um, return because these gorillas basically kill. So, you know, instead of Jurassic Park where dinosaur, you know, dinosaurs kill, you got gorillas killing. Uh, and no one's really heard of gorillas killing people. Uh, so, something happens to the, the team members up there. So the boss of this company called Travicom or whatever, the CEO, who's also the father of one of those, those men who died, he uh, basically sends another expedition up there to see what happened. And Laura Linney's character is the fiance of one of the guys who died. So she tries to get this expedition together. Um, she brings along a primatologist, uh, named Peter, who's played by Dylan Walsh, uh, the, the new stepfather. Uh, honestly, he was better in this movie, even though all he did in this movie was talk to a gorilla. And basically, he did nothing. Uh, he did nothing in this movie, but it was a lot better than him as a stepfather. I just, I'm, I'm sorry, I, I can't stand him as a stepfather. I just can't. There's only one stepfather, and that's Terry O'Quinn. Dylan Walsh tried. And that's it. it. It's a failure. I, I just didn't care for it. Anyway. Um, so he's trying to teach gorillas to talk. It's called Human Communication to Primates. 
using a mountain gorilla named Amy, who specializes in talking a certain way with a backpack and a glove. So her sign language is basically translated to a digital device that, you know, when she does this, it talks like Amy, good gorilla, Amy, hungry, Amy, horny, Amy, dumb, whatever. It, whatever she wants to say, she just has to do this and it happens. So whatever. She has a specialized backpack. But Peter is concerned. He's concerned about Amy's drawing because she starts drawing these images of the Eye of the Providence, which is the city of Zinj. There's there's some kind of connection between us. So then you have Tim Curry, who enters the movie, and he's fantastic, by the way. Oh, I'm looking for the lost city of Zinj, and she will take us there. <laughs> oh, I could be such a beast. <laughs> but Tim Curry plays this explorer, and he's looking for the lost city of Zinj, and he sees this gorilla. And he understands that this gorilla may be the map and the way to get to this lost city because of her drawings. She has drawn the eye. She will take us there. <laughs> uh, I, I'm sorry. I just I love the I love the characters in this movie. It's just a lot of fun. I don't know. Like when they get this expedition together, they arrive in this one place where it's like this barracks and they have to get safe passage over the Congo. You know, the military has to grant them safe passage. They go, they, they go in there and they offer money to this commander or whatever. And he's like, Mr. Homolka, stop eating my sesame cake. Stop eating my sesame cake. What are you doing in my country? You bag of shit. Captain, please. I only wish to explore and discover this fella is a big bag of shit. You should shit this rat from off your neck. He owes money to everyone. Everybody goes. I'm going to ask you to wait outside, Mr. Homolka. <laughs> Tim Curry was eating his sesame cake. I guess he wasn't supposed to. That was a, a hilarious part in this movie. And you get a lot of those. I mean... You even have Ernie Hudson in this movie. And I like his role in this. He's sort of like... A, uh, he, he's kind of a badass in this movie, but he's also a guy who just doesn't take anybody's crap. Like, like whatever he said... Like, whatever anybody says, he just does his own thing. And he doesn't follow, like, the government crap and, and stuff like that. He's all about doing stuff for his, his benefit, yet being smart about it. So I, I don't know. I like, I like, um, Ernie Hudson in this, in this movie. Uh, Joe Don Baker's in this music by Jerry Goldsmith. It does have a really good theme to it. I do like the theme, but it takes pretty much the whole half of the film for them to even get up to the Congo. What's once they get there, there's this kind of cool scene where they're on the plane and they're being shot down. Like these people are shooting rockets up at them and they use these flare guns. I, I, I like this scene because of the way the camera is there, the camera's like behind them, you know, Laura Linney takes out a flare gun and she shoots it and the flare, you know, connects with these rockets. Cause it's like heat seeking. So that was really cool. And then once they get onto the ground, it starts to become I don't want to say like a horror film, but it starts to get creepy sometimes. Like when they're out in the tent at night and they set up this laser like um, perimeter and they're, they're at night and there's like these machine gun things on the, on a, on a, on a turret. And when it senses something near it, it starts to shoot. Well, it's really cool. Like on the radar, they, it shows like all these gorillas trying to get in there and, and like get to them. And these gorillas, you know, they, they still cannot believe that there's gray gorillas, these gorillas that kill. And Peter, who is a primatologist, knows everything about gorillas. Him, he, he says, there's no such thing as gray gorillas. And then she's like, well, I saw one. And he's like, I'm sorry, they don't exist. And they're like going back and forth. It's like, he obviously doesn't know shit about gorillas. Because what happens here? You got that guy from True Lies, the, the guy who looks like... Um, 
uh, he looks, I don't know if he's Indian or what, what he is, but he, he was in true lies. Um, he had a pretty big part there. He has a pretty big part here. I don't, I just don't remember his name. This movie made 50 or wait, this movie made $152 million at the box office and the budget was 50 million. This movie made a lot of money, you know, despite the negative reviews. Yes. A lot of negative reviews. Like I said, People did not like this film, including me. When I first saw it, like I said, I thought it was boring. It took a lot of time to get to where they needed to go. And once they got there, it started to get interesting. But then things started to just disappoint me. And, I, and I'll get into that. There's, there's some things, you know, I might actually spoil this. Just because I want to talk about what happens at the end. Um, so they get to the city of Zinj. And, you know, they discover the mine where all these diamonds are. And that's the only reason that Tim Curry is there. However, we discover another reason on why this, this technology, this laser technology, there's a huge, what they call a geode, a giant diamond that's in this shaft place. And the gray gorillas are surrounding this mine. So if you go in this mine and you pick up a diamond, those gorillas do not like that. They are trained and they are sworn to kill anybody who comes into that vicinity. However, there's been people who haven't even gotten into the mine that have died without even entering the city. So those gorillas are, they have a perimeter around the whole place. You just never know where they're going to pop up. There's a really cool fight scene, though. I, I do like the, the gorilla fight scene, like where they, you know, they're surrounding these guys and they're smashing their heads and skulls and they're, you know, hitting them with their arms and. Um, just a really intense kind of scene that happens um, there, but there's a part in here that I just, I never, I never understood this. Maybe I'm looking too much into this, but when the, when the volcano erupts, lava starts to go down to where the gorillas actually live, the gray gorillas, and the gorillas start to jump into the lava. They start to jump in there like committing suicide or just jumping in there. Maybe because they don't have anywhere to go. I know they're on this platform and they can't really go this way. But they just end up jumping in. Maybe that's why. Maybe because they know they can't go anywhere else so they just jump in there. Or maybe they don't know what this... Maybe they think it's water. They're not that stupid. Gorillas are smart. But um, they just start committing suicide. I always thought that was the funniest thing. Like they're just like ah da 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 da. <laughs> Bye. Um, you know, but like I said, maybe it's because they know they can't go anywhere else. So that that's fine. Whatever. Um, I also like the scene. It's probably my favorite scene with the talking gorilla. I I really don't care for the talking gorilla that much, but she pretty much saves a couple of people. Um, she confronts these gray gorillas who are towering over her. These gray gorillas are taller than any kind of mountain gorilla. And she's in there with her talking backpack. Get away, bad gorillas, go, get away. And these gorillas are like, like, who the fuck? Like, what? They're sitting there, like, talking amongst each other, like, rah, 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 rah. Like, what? Like, well, what is going on? Like, who is this gorilla? This gorilla can talk. It's like, oh my god. And I kind of like that scene because it shows that these gorillas look at this one gorilla and and understand that it's different. It, it, the fact that it can talk, for one thing, it's got this backpack and this glove thing. Like it's like to them, it's like aliens to us. Like we would look at aliens, like like oh my god, what? Like to them, it was it. I do like that scene because she pretty much kind of saves today. You know, saves the day like a superhero would. Um, there's some good moments to be had here, people. I mean, I don't think. This movie is as bad as it, it's not as bad as it used to be, or at least when I thought it was. Um, it, but in, in a way, from a certain point of view, I can understand why some people do. Because it is slow paced. It does take a while for it to pick up. And this is an action adventure film. Now the adventure part is there. The action part, like I said, does not happen for a long while. So you're, you're going to be sitting there waiting for the action. And you know. Where is it at? I mean there's a part where the where this hippo attacks their raft. 
I guess you could call that like an action part. But the the true action doesn't start until the plane is in the air and they get on the ground of the Congo. That that's that's basically where it starts. So I don't know. I think this movie is really good, and um, I definitely recommend it to people. Like if you haven't seen it, like I said, there's, you know, good cast: Laura Linney, Dylan Walsh. I like him in this movie. You know, Ernie Hudson, Joe uh, Pantoliano is in this. You know, from Goonies, uh, one of the Fratelli brothers. Um, you know, like I said, Bruce Campbell, he has a little part. Uh, Frank Welker did the vocal effects for the gorillas, which is odd because, you know, Gary Hecker and Peter Elliott provide the gorilla vocalization, but Frank Welker did the effects for the gorillas. So I guess maybe the grunts or the... What Frank Welker's awesome, dude. He can do anything. But like I said, you know, Tim, uh, Tim Curry, Joe Don Baker, um, pretty solid cast here. I I do like the cast. But like I said, too, like the the whole adventure thing about the diamonds. That's just one part of this movie. That's one just one story. Then there's a story of Amy trying to get her back to the Congo with her with her other gorillas, the other mountain gorillas. That's another story. Um. The Travicom company trying to get an expedition to go check out where, where these people are. And the fact that Laura Linney is actually a fiancé of the one that died. That's another story. So there's like all these stories wrapped up into one. Like, you know, Tim Curry trying to find the diamonds. It's, 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 it's got a lot going on in this movie. So, you know, I, I would give this movie probably, I'd say I'd give it at least a seven and a half out of 10 for me. So yeah, definitely check this one. Have you guys seen Congo? Let me know in the comments.